cracking the cryptic. And what is apparently today, I should warn you, this is an X-rated puzzle uh, from the man behind the miracle Sudoku, Mitchell Lee. Uh, this puzzle has burned through most of our test solvers and Mark. Um, and I've been warned to try it, uh, but be prepared with another puzzle uh, as I'm likely to fail. So I'm going to give this a short go on the basis that apparently it's, it's just nigh on impossible. Um, but obviously with it being by Mitchell... Uh, I, I want to try it. Um, it's also slightly terrifying because uh, you may remember the last puzzle that we looked at by Mitchell Lee. Um, we featured as a competition puzzle on the basis it was, you know, it was almost beyond understanding by a human being. It was so utterly brilliant. The logic was so clever in it that we ran it as a competition. And many of you actually did manage to solve it, but very few of you managed to solve it logically. Uh, and in fact, one of our most popular Patreon videos is uh, a video by Mitchell himself, where he explains uh, how to solve that puzzle um, and the tricks that he incorporated in it. Uh, speaking of Patreon, actually, just to remind you that I have uploaded my solver, Bobuardo da Vinci's Cosmology Puzzle. So if you want to see me struggle, you can definitely watch that video and take a lot of schadenfreude out of it. Um, not an easy puzzle, a brilliant puzzle, but very hard indeed. Um, now, this puzzle today has a very simple rule set, though. Let me tell you, we've got normal Sudoku rules apply, along thermometers, uh, the digits must increase starting from the bulb end. So you can see we've got some bulbs on the thermometer. Now in, in the new software, the bulbs are coming out and they're not all one color, but hopefully it's pretty clear which of the bulb, which is the bulb end of the thermometer. It's the one with the big gray circle. Um, that's all that you need to know. The way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video as usual. And with that, let's get cracking and see how we can do. Now, I mean, the first thing that strikes me about this puzzle when I look at it is that I mean it's a stunning looking puzzle but it also most thermometer sudokus and I know this because Mark and I have set a lot of thermo puzzles for our app they you need to have longer thermometers than this to provide any sort of disambiguation in the grid let alone with only five given digits and appreciate there are nine thermometers but each one has a great deal of freedom on it. In fact, I mean, if let's just pick a bulb. I mean, this can be any number from, well, it can't quite be six in this particular case. Let's pick this one. I mean, that can basically be one, two, three, four, well, that one can't be five, but you know, there's sort of six possible numbers. In fact, that one does have six possible numbers at the start because that is, this cell is not seen by any other digit. So this can be one, two, three, four, five, or six. And that is not much of a restriction. Good grief. Um, okay. I'm trying to see whether there is actually any point at all in me pencil marking anything in this puzzle because I mean, are there any cells that are remotely restricted? That's the question I'm asking. Is there some some cell in this grid that if you stared at it long enough, you'd realize that it was it could only be very few things. So we have got two givens in column six. And this is on a thermometer and it does see a given in row five. So this cell, I think, on the face of it, is the most restricted in the puzzle. Now, what can this cell be? It can't be one, because one can only go at the bulb end of the thermometer. It can't be two, because it's too far from the bulb end to be a two. Two could go here, but then this would have to be a three. So this can be three, it can't be four, it can be five. It can't be six, it could be seven, it can't be eight, oh, and it can't be nine because nine. So this square still has three options. One, two, three, and then that could be anything. Really? This is the most restricted cell? <laughs> uh, I'm not that surprised, I have to say. I mean, there's clearly some clever trick to be 
um, found to solve this puzzle. Um, the thing that's unclear is what the trick is. I don't, I'm not even prepared to go down that route. I think that way madness lies. Um, so I am going to approach this differently. I am going to try and What am I going to try and do? There are three bulbs in this row. So what I'm wondering is whether I can either use the, the most restricted digits in a thermo Sudoku are one and nine. And why is that? It's because you can never put a one or a nine partially along a thermometer. So in this grid, there are a variety of places where it might not be obvious until you think about it, but once you think about it, it is obvious where you can't put ones and nines. So let's just, let's start with that. Let's try and work out where one goes in this puzzle. So I am going to highlight all the cells that could be ones. I know that this seems completely bonkers and it's probably not helpful, but I am going to do that because I don't have any better ideas and at least it is an idea. Um, bong, 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 bong. Good sound effects here on Cracking the Cryptic. Right, now this is going to look rather untidy. Let's highlight all those in purple. And what can we deduce from this? What can we deduce from this? So what I'm doing, by the way, just so that you know, is I'm scanning the patterns in the rows and the columns, and I'm trying to see whether there are rows and columns that have a similar highlighting pattern. And that, well, there is something. If you look at row three, where can the one go in row three? It can only go in one of those particular positions. Now look, in this row here, you've got exactly identical positions. And in fact, if we view the two, if you ignore the fact there's a two here, and obviously we could never put a one in this square, row four has the same constraint look. Row seven doesn't quite, because this cell could be a one. Ah, but row 9 has the same constraint because the 6 is basically irrelevant for the purposes of... So actually, 1, 2, 3, 4. I need two more. Okay. Hmm. Well, this, this is really is clutching at straws, but I'm going to go with it. Let's look at row one and look at row seven. Now, if I assume, and this is a big assumption, that there's no one in the bulbs in either of these two rows, let's just assume that for the sake of exposition, then I have the same highlighting pattern as to where ones can go in six different rows. So what if we look if, so if we look along these six different rows, assuming of course that these bulbs haven't got ones in them, then I would know that in these rows the ones must appear in a subset of the same six columns of the grid. Now I've no idea what I think it I don't know what that's called even. I don't know what that's called, a sort of six column restriction. I think five five is a squirm bag. Um, and probably you can represent this in another way where it's, I don't know, it's something else. But, but the thing I'm thinking is that if there was no one in these two bulb ends of the thermometer, I would be able to do an elimination. In fact, if I highlight those cells, I highlight those in orange. So now... The elimination I could do, if these are not, if there's no one in either of those squares, then there couldn't be ones anywhere else in these columns. Because I have found, I know I need to put six ones into these six rows of the grid, and there are only six columns to take, 
from which you can sort of choose those cells. So I would be able to rule out ones in lots of these positions. Look, now some of them could be ruled out anyway because they're on a thermometer. But I just want to take a look and see whether this is helpful or not. The answer is it's probably not. Ah, OK. Well, we have got, I have got a deduction. I've got a deduction. It's not going to give me a digit. But I have got a deduction because look at look at um, this box. There is now nowhere to put a one in this box because I can't put a one partially along the thermometer. So that's cool. OK, well, it's not. So what that means is that there must be at least one one in one of those two bulbs, because if there isn't, you can't put a one in that box. Ta da! That's absolutely useless, but it is quite interesting. So there must be at least one one in these two bulbs. Let's, let's highlight those bulbs so we can see. Now, can we tell anything about the world if we try and put ones into those? problem is that there's just you just don't get anything I mean even if you knew for sure this was a one let's say we knew for certain that square was a one what what can we get from that there are no other ones in the grid I mean there is a natural restriction on ones in this column anyway if you have actually if we stare at this column for a moment you can see the one can only go in those two cells because of the thermometer positions so that's a little bit interesting but this column you know you've actually got more positions this puzzle is weird isn't it it's there's a lot going on in this puzzle um, Just not getting this. Uh, okay, okay. Reset. The ones are not. I'm going to try and remember. There's a one in one of those two, or both of those. But I don't think that this is how we're meant to solve this. And if it is, I apologise. I've just missed something there. But I'm not understanding quite how to take that forward. So I'm going to. I'm going to look at nines now. Maybe we look at nines. So hmm, I'm not actually sure this is going to be any better, but let's let's check. Nine can go at the end of the thermometers only. So we get a few restrictions there, a few restrictions here. Nine, nine, that could be nine, that could be nine. This already feels worse. Uh, oh dear. Those, 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 that, 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 that. Those two, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Right, let's highlight those. Highlight those in yellow this time. Um, now, stare. Come on, Simon. Let's spot something. Ah, no, I mean, I can spot the, the obvious. In the words of Basil Fawlty. There we go. Those two cells are the only cells in row five that can be a nine. Let's highlight those. See if that shows those three in this row. So you can sort of see there's there's something going on in terms of the positions of ones and nines. They're, they're sort of more restricted in these cells in the center of each. Ah. The center of each box. But even yeah, even in this row, there's still there's still quite a lot of latitude. So, so there's a restriction. Nines can only go in two places in row five. Ones can only go in two places in column five. Apart from that, this is not fruitful, is it? Oh dear, dear, dear. Uh, okay. Okay. What do we do now? I'm running out of ideas. 14 minutes. I've got, I've, this might be a record. I've not even got a pencil mark. 
but I do know one of those has to be a one. <laughs> um, Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the trick that Mitchell put in his other puzzle. So, I don't know how many of you have watched that video, but it is quite interesting. Because, actually, it might be quite interesting here. It might be quite interesting here. So, what Mitchell did in that little killer Sudoku is... He highlight. Oh, I'm going to get this wrong now. I think it was those squares. We highlight these squares. Let me look at this now. So, ah, this, this, oh. Okay, now this actually, I don't know if this is good or not, but it certainly is quite an interesting thought. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all these squares in purple and we're going to highlight all these squares in blue. Let's do that. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Fistemafel's name, but this is an application of Fistemafel's theorem that Mitchell used to set his monstrous little killer because he made use of the fact that the set of digits in the purple squares is identical to the set of digits in the blue squares. Now, you may be asking why that's true. Uh, let me just, I'm not even sure whether there's any point running through this, but effectively the reason is that those four rows of the grid obviously contain the digits one to nine once each. These four columns of the grid contain the digits one to nine once each. Now in both of those sets of four lots of the digits one to nine, the green cells appeared. So the green cells can effectively be deducted out of both sides of that equation and that leaves you with the fact that the purple squares are exactly equal to the blue squares. And that's a very short form of it, but ho I think that hopefully some of you will understand that. It's, it's sort of, it's not too difficult to get your head around once you've seen it once or twice. And I have watched Mitchell's video about four times actually. So, um, now the reason I thought this, this, as I was highlighting, I was suddenly thinking maybe this is interesting, is look, these, these digits are all hitting the thermometer. And in fact, we could say instantly, if this pattern in box one repeated in all of the boxes of the Sudoku, we would have a big problem because there is simply no way that the purple digits can be equal to the blue digits across the whole grid if they, if they were disposed like this. Because of course the purple digits here are always going to be greater than the total of the blue digits because the blue digits is, are always sort of beneath them on the thermometer. So even if this was a 1 and this was a 2 and this was a 3 and this was a 4, you can see that the those two are always greater than these two in total. And that that's impossible if that's across the whole grid. But here, the thing is, it all gets a bit skew if. And in fact, there are some boxes like this one, where not every cell on the thermometer is is hit by a coloured digit. And also the parity sort of change. Oh, this is very... Hmm. This, there's something nagging at me here about this. I think, I think this is, this as well. I mean, this is beautiful the way it works in this box. I love the idea that you can, uh, 
Now. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to try something different. I'm just going to try. It's, it's along the same lines, but I'm going to try something different. Rather than put the greens into 16 squares, why don't I put them in the middle of the thermometers? If I put the greens there, now highlight. Now this might be better. This might be better, you know. It's less complicated, that's for true. But it's also hitting all of the squares on the thermometers. Now, this, this, this is really interesting. This is really interesting because now, now I've got a pattern. This, this might be it. This might be how we're meant to think about the puzzle because now we can just do a version of, we, it's the same thing. As I just showed you with the complicated 16 cell version but this is only nine cells but the critical thing here is I've managed to ensure that all of the colored squares hit thermometers so and the logic is the same the logic is the same I, I will now go through the logic again because this I think is interesting if we look at the purple squares and the green squares together you can see that they comprise three complete rows of the Sudoku Therefore, they contain three lots of the digits one to nine. Now, if we do, on the other hand, what do the blue and the green squares contain? Well, they comply, comprise three whole columns of the Sudoku. So they also, they contain exactly the same digits, three sets of the digits one to nine. Now, if I deduct, therefore, those things, those sets are equal to each other but both include the green digits. So if I take the green digits out of those, having set those equations equal to each other and take the green digits out, the blue digits and the purple digits must be identical. Now the question, ah, there's something going on here because now I've just noticed that the bulb of the thermometer is on a purple square in an awful lot of these boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in seven boxes, I'm getting excited about this. I think this is important because in seven boxes, the bulb of the thermometer is purple which means in seven boxes, the blues, if we, just, if we just look at this box, just look at one box where the purple, the purple digit is on a bulb, we can say with certainty about this box that the blues are greater in total than the purples because this blue is greater than that purple and this blue is greater than that purple. So th it's definitely true for any box where the purple is on the bulb that the blue is greater than the purple. But look, there's so many of these boxes where blue is greater than the purple, therefore. In fact, almost all of the boxes. But we know that overall there must be parity. Overall, the blues have to equal the purples. So in this box and this box, the purples have to be absolutely humongous. So in fact, what is the maximum difference you can make between, between two colors along these thermometers. If you made that, a, we know, in fact, we know there's a one. Perhaps there has to be to both, perhaps both of these have to be ones because of this principle. But if this, if this is a one and that's a nine, 
there's a difference of eight between those two digits. So in order to create the maximum difference between blue and purple, or purple and blue in this box, I need purple to be the maximum it can be greater than the blue. But for these two squares, we know that the blue is greater than the purple, right? So the, pur the blue must be one higher than the purple. So the maximum, the maximum I can make the purple greater. So if, for example, this was a four, in order to ensure that this box had the maximum difference between purple and blue, I'd have to make that a three. And then the overall difference obviously is 12 minus five, which is seven. So the maximum I can make this box and this box greater than the other boxes is by 14 and there are seven other oh yes 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 we I, I think I've done it I think I think I, I think I've done it because yes I have done it in this box in this box how much What's the minimum the blues can be greater than the purples by? What's the absolute minimum? It's two. This one, if I make it exactly one bigger than that one, that's one. This one also has to be greater than that one by a minimum of one. Therefore, in this box, the absolute minimum I can make the blues greater than the purples by is two. So in all of these boxes, the absolute minimum that I can make the blues greater than the purple by is 14. But the absolute maximum I can recover any difference by in those two box is 14 because I can't make the differences greater than seven. So these two have to be, have to have a difference of seven and the rest of them have to have a difference of two in the other direction. And that must mean that these these two you don't know because these are one apart. We know that that one has to be one greater than that one. But these two have to be one and nine because I have to have the absolute maximum difference. So this this is a one. This is a nine. And in every... And in every other box, wherever you have... Wherever you have like a purple and then a blue, the blue can't, it must be exactly one greater than the purple next to it. So this blue must be one greater than the purple next to it. Always. Otherwise, you can't make the puzzle work. And that feels like an enormously powerful restriction. And I just want to stop now because I, if I can't solve it now, I will be absolutely gutted. But... I just want to say to Mitchell Lee, this, my friend, is yet another example of your genius. This is totally original. It's totally original. Are you not seen anything like this before using a thermometer Sudoku? It is just a stunning idea to put, to use the thermometers like this, to take advantage of this pattern is just a work. It's so clever. Now, please, please let me be able to solve it. So, so maybe that's why he's put these givens in. Are, the, are these givens must now be important because they must, yes, okay. For example, for example, That square, oh no, well, that square can't be a seven. That's not that helpful, but I think it's true to say that that square can't be a seven, because if it is a seven, that square would have to be an eight, because it must be one, only one higher, otherwise we break this constraint. So there is, so maybe one is the important digit. So what does this two stop? This two will stop certain cells from being one, like this one. 
this can't be 1 because if it's 1 you have to put a 2 there so this is not 1 this this is not 1 that's not 1 that can be 1 oh this is it this 2 now where does 1 go in this row now, because of the rule we just talked about, it can't go here, it can't go here by Sudoku, it can't go there, that's halfway along a thermometer. It can go here, it can't go there, halfway along a thermometer, it can't go here because of that one, and it can't go here because that will have to be a 2 if this is a 1. And that means I think the 1 has to go there. And if this is a 1, this has to be a 2. Now, that doesn't mean this has to be a 3. But this this is a pair here, so whatever we put in there, that has to be one greater than it. But it doesn't follow that this has to be this has to be one greater than that. We've just managed to we have to keep the parity to two in each box, i.e. the what the blue this blue must be one greater than that one, this blue must be one greater than that one. So two now in this box is a bit restricted, is it? two can't go this far along the thermometer so it must be in one of those two squares if the two is here this would be a three which might be possible actually um oh don't don't misclick now good grief um so one in this box maybe if that was a one, that would be okay. So one, one can't go there. One's in one of three positions, which is a bit disappointing. This one, ah, yeah, okay. Look at this box, box eight. Where does the one go in box eight? This one and this one trap trap it into one of three squares it can't be partially along a thermometer so it's got to be in one of those two squares now if it's here this square has to be a two and it can't be so it's not here this is a one that means one is in ah one yeah this is good one is in one of these two squares it can't be here because that would have to be a two so this is a one one it goes here by sudoku oh my goodness two goes here two goes there one goes in one of those two cells. One goes in one of these two cells. And, oh no. Which was, there was a row and a column where the ones and the nines were restricted, wasn't there? Which one was that? Was that, was that the nines were restricted in this row, weren't they? So the nine is either here or here. The one was restricted in this column and we've got the position of it. So that's a shame. Um... Okay, sorry, I'm getting a bit... I feel like I've done quite well, but now... Now I'm stumbling again. Um, I feel like I've got to keep looking at ones and nines. Ones and nines are by far the most restricted digit, or digits. So nine may be in this box up here. Uh, nine could go at the end of the box though. Nine may be in this box down there. Can't go here. Um, oh dear. What is the next step? Nine. Maybe I could, can I use the eight somehow? What's this eight doing? What is this eight preventing?
it's preventing an 8 in this square. If you... Ah, so this can't be a 9. Because if this was a 9, I'd have to put an 8 here. Is that deliberate? The answer is, I don't know. Um, this not being... Oh, I see. I, it is deliberate. Look at column five. Look at column five. Where does the nine go in column five? Now, it can't go midway along a thermometer. So we can rule out this square and we can rule out this square. And we can rule out this square because it's in the line with the nine. So the nine has one of three potential positions. Those three positions um, could be those three positions there could be a nine. Now let's analyze them. If this is a nine, we know we have to put an eight in here because we must make sure there's a difference of one between these two cells. So this is not a nine. If this is a nine, I have to put eight here and that clashes with the eight. So neither of these squares is nine. And that means the only place you can put a nine in the column is there. This is a nine, which means there's a nine in one of those two cells. We get, because there's a nine here, this must be an eight. Because there's an eight here, look, th this must be an eight. Because this is an eight, this must be one difference. That's a seven. Now nine is a bit restricted in this box up here, I think, because it's got to go in one of those two cells which means it's got to go in one of these two cells. Eights, sevens. We've, we've got five digits in column five now. So we still need three, five, six, and seven into these squares. So let's put those in and have a stare. Well, that can't be six because there's a six. In fact, ah, that can't be seven either. Because if that's seven, you have to put six in the cell below it. So that's, this is a three or a five. So there is a six and a seven for sure up here. Oh, and this can't be a six or a seven. Because if this is a six or a seven, this square has to be hugely high. And it can only be three, five, six or seven. So that's not six or seven. So there's a three, five pair. So we get three, five, we get a six, seven pair. Oh, this is gorgeous. Now, what can this square be? If this is seven, you have to put a six here because they have to be one different. And you can't because that's already a six. So this is not seven, that's six, that's seven. Now this has to be one different, that's five. That, this five means that's three, which means this must be two. The three means that's a five, which means that must be four. And all of a sudden the puzzle is maybe becoming doable. Twos. Oh, why did I say that? I am so stupid. Um, the gods of Sudoku are now going to rain hell upon me, aren't they? Uh, this is a four nine pair. This is a five nine pair. Those two squares must be three and six, I think. Which means I should be able to work out that square. That's got to be a three. Just by Sudoku, those two squares are two and seven. Now, now I've got an eight here. This can't be nine in anymore. Because if it is, I have to put an eight immediately below it. So that's not nine. This becomes a nine. Nine must, oh no. Nine can still be in one of two places there. It, it can't be in the middle of the thermometer. Uh... Right, so 
this is two that would have to be three that still looks that still looks possible if this is nine this has to be eight that still looks possible so maybe we have to look along this row we've got we've got quite a lot of digits we need two three six and seven into the open positions please don't let this be got to be careful with the box box one and box nine remember is a slightly different those two have to be one apart but this doesn't this square doesn't have to be one different from this square so it, So if that was seven, that breaks. In fact, if that was six or seven, this this breaks, doesn't it? Because that would have to be at least nine, and there's already a nine in the box. So this is a two or a three. Now, if this is a two or a three, this square has to be a three or a four, both of which, unfortunately, are possible. Now, that can't be a two or a three, therefore. So this has to be six or seven, which means this square has to be seven or eight. So two, three, six, seven. Over this side, is there anything restricted here? Oh, two is in one of the, two is not here. Okay. In fact, two is not there either. Ah, three, six, seven. There's a three, six, seven triple in this row. Sorry, I was a bit slow to that, but that means that square's a two, which means this square is a three. which means something, no doubt. Don't know what it is yet. Three must go in one of those squares. Oh dear, uh, now I've ground to an absolutely massive halt again. Um, oh, this two is pointing up at those two, so that's quite cool. That means I get a two here which means I get a nine on a thermometer, not a zero. If the nine is on the thermometer, this square is an eight. This nine fixes the nine and the five over here. That means there's got to be a nine in what, well, actually, where does the nine go now? In this box, it's got to go in one of those three squares. It can't go in either of those two, so it must go here. Nine now must be in one of these two cells. And we've got quite a lot of digits in row five of the grid. So let's take another look there. We need three, five, and six. So let's highlight these and have a stare again. Imagine if I solved this puzzle. I will be so proud of myself. Um, now this can't be three because that can't be one. So if this is five or six, this must be one greater. This is six or seven. Ah, ah, and if this is five or six, that can't be five. This is three, which means this is four. Which means this is four. Three, four, five, six, six, seven. And I'm now going to look at this row, because again, I've got five digits in it. I need three, four, six, and eight this time. That's not four. This, is there anything restricting what this can be? It can't be three, look, because if it's three, I have to put four here and I can't. So that's not three. So this is five, seven, or, ah, this can't be eight because I can't put nine here. So this is, this becomes a four or a six. So this becomes a five or a seven. Four, six this side of it let's look that can't be eight for obvious reasons oh and this has to be one greater than that so if this is three four or six all of those look possible actually because that then has to be four five or seven i can't see any of those being ruled out No, sorry. Um, okay. 
So I've actually got, ah, if this is a 5 or a 6, that square must be a 6 or a 7. Because that must be one, the blue one must be one greater than the purple. Three. Three is a little bit restricted, actually. Look. Three must be in exactly one of those two positions. And in this position down here, if this is a three, this one has to be exactly one greater. Ah, that can't be a three because there's a four in this column. Yes, so this is not three, which means that's three. Which means that's not three. Which means there's a three in one of those two cells, which means that there's a three here, yes. That's not three. This is three. Now that means I've got to make that four because I must restrict the difference between these two cells so far as the blues are concerned. That becomes, now I've got a six, eight pair in the row. That becomes a four, which means that must be a five. Five, five. There must be a five in one of those two cells. Three, three has got to go in one of those two cells, I think. And I've actually, if you actually stare at the thermometers in this grid, I've got a lot of them pencil marked down. This square has to be one greater than this, so this has to be seven or eight. Oh. Ah, now this 6 suddenly becomes important because that square can't be a 6. So where does the 6 go in box 7? It must be in one of those two squares. Why does that matter? Well, this 6 is going to see that square. So this must be a 5, which means that's a 6. That's a 5, trusting my pencil marks. This 6, oh, this 6 is going to open the puzzle up. In fact, the whole puzzle, I think, is about to crack open. Because I've also got this going on. So I've got to be careful here. I'm going to take this very, very slowly. So this 6 is going to give me a 6 here and a 3 here. That's for true. That's giving me a 3 there. The two 6s obviously force this to be a 6. Which force this to be a 7. Which force this to be an 8. Which force this to be a 6. And that to be an 8. This 8 forces this to be a 7. That forces this to be a 6, which means that's not 6, but that one now must be 7. That finishes the 7 and the 2. That gives me the 2 here. Oh my goodness. Um, I've now... I have. I've done, the thermo I've done the thermometers. Well, that's... I mean, this video's going out, even if I can't solve it from here, because this is... That's a nine. Sixes and sevens into these two squares. Six here is going to tell me the order. Oh, please keep going. Seven must go here. These two squares have got to be one and four. There's a four there. Four, one, one. I'm going to be so upset if, I, if I've made a mistake here. Eight here. This must be 4, just by Sudoku. This is 4 by Sudoku. I need 5 and 6 here. 5, 6. 5 here. That looks okay. 1, 8. That looks okay. 8 here. Now look at this box. I still need 3 and 7. Check. Yes, I did it. Not that bad either. 50 minutes. Um, what a puzzle that is. What a puzzle. <sighs> that is just, just a beautiful, beautiful logic problem from Mitchell Lee. Again, very, very hard. And I'd never, ever have solved it if I hadn't, if I hadn't watched Mitchell's own video on a slightly more complicated pattern than this. But it gave me the idea to try it with the... 
uh, well, this slightly less complicated, but still using this Fistemafel technique where you can identify a set of digits that has to be equivalent to another set of digits. And that, that was the key to solving it. Ah, I'm, I hope you enjoyed watching and um, do let us know in the comments and do let me know if you managed to solve it yourselves. Um, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.